by placing Joad in a post-NAFTA songbook that includes songs about conflicted border patrol agents, migrants who end up in Fresno meth labs, Tijuana locals who smuggle cocaine balloons just to get across the border, Springsteen was picking up the conversation that Woody Guthrie's deportee had only just begun. The modern Tom Jones were less, are, are less and less not white and working class. The modern Tom Jones is from Jalisco, or Michoacan, or Zacatecas, or Tijuana, and does not, does not have the freedom to just ramble around. He's a deportee before he even makes it across the border if he makes it across the border, if the highway doesn't eat him alive. Now as powerful as Guthrie's migrant memes are, as powerful as tracking the dozens and dozens of cover versions of deportee and John Tom Joe can be, as a historical tool of critical thinking, it has its limits. Because the vast majority of those covers are in English. The vast majority are songs about Mexicans, not by Mexicans. Guthrie's migrant songs have in large part birthed a chain of influence carried out by singers who for the most part look a lot like Guthrie and sound a lot like Guthrie, or at the very least come out of the U.S. folk music uh, history. Listening to, uh, lingering too much on this chain of influence, over-celebrating it, I think, covers up the fact that decades before and decades after Springsteen spotted the ghost of Tom Joad, Mexican musicians were doing the same. In fact, nearly 18 years before the, the plane crash of the deportee song, a group by the name of Los Hermanos Banuelos had already put the deportee into the cross-border songbook. In 1930, the duo entered a Los Angeles recording studio to cut their song, El Deportado, the deportee, sung from the perspective of a migrant who is forced to leave Mexico during the revolution, is then deceived by his employers in the north, and then eventually is repatriated as part of the repa repatriation wave that begins with the Great Depression. Let's hear a little bit. The Dust Bowl was already a part of migrant Mexican consciousness. The Dust Bowl and the Great Depression were American events, yet they were simultaneously Mexican ones, too. The Dust Bowl devastation that drove so many Okies west to California, the Dust Bowl devastation that is the foundation for Guthrie song sagas, is the very same one that was used as justification to rid the U.S. of the so-called deportable aliens whose jobs could be better used for quote-unquote needy citizens. In fact, the same period that found Woody Guthrie choosing to cross the border south of Tijuana was when so many Mexicans were still not choosing to return home and found themselves relocated against their will to that same city. And it was those years in Tijuana in the 1930s when Mexican deportees settled and founded La Libertad, ironically, freedom, the liberty, Tijuana's oldest residential neighborhood, which has the border wall as its backyard fence. The Spanish language deportee is but one of countless examples of how Mexican ballads or corridos, those classic folk ballads turned alternative border media networks, have been giving voice to migrant stories ever since the border was created in 1848. In the late, in the late 1980s, for example, the Texas-based Los Terribles del Norte, the terrible ones from the north, updated the Banuelos Ode with one of their own, which starts with a call from uh, a deported father to his son in the United States. Oh. 
Hello. Who's this? Soy yo, hijo. Hey, Dad. Where are you calling from? De Mexico. I missed you, Dad. When are you coming home? Yo también Spaces of the U.S. Mexico borderland, the Woody Guthrie traveled through, lived in, crossed, and portrayed in his songs have always been sonic spaces, musical landscapes where the histories of Mexican ranchers, farmhands, campesinos, outlaws, mothers, and sons have long been chronicled in the strung stanzas of these border ballads. So central is music to the experience of migrant life in the borderlands that in the Mexican anthropologist uh, Manuel Gamillo's pioneering 1927 migration study of 2,000 Mexican immigrants returning from the U.S., he found that 20% of them brought back phonographs. For every 100 immigrants, 118 records returned to Mexico, which is to say that moving back and forth across the border has always been, in part, a musical act, and that migrancy is a sonic practice as much as a spatial one. Instead of treating the border, be it a line, a monument, a fence, a wall, as a partition of silence, where narrative does not exist. Mexican migrant music has always treated the border as something that, to borrow the title of Paul Botello's mural in East Los Angeles, the border wall sings and speaks and shouts. It's full of stories, it's full of narrative. The border is a living musical witness to the injustices and triumphs of Mexican life. One Mexican scholar has written extensively about Mexican songs as forming a decade spanning what he calls Songbook of Migrancy, a mobile archive of everyday migrant life, of cross-border feelings and emotions that create communities of sentiment between Mexico and the U.S., and that lives in both formal and informal markets. The Songbook of Migrancy will remain alive and valid, he wrote, as long as it continues to function as, quote, a cultural link between absences and anguish. From songs about dishwashers to songs about cocaine smugglers, from songs about family reunions to songs about the border as a migrant tune, the past century of Norteño music and banda music and cumbia is an archive of migrancy. And in 2001, Los Tigres del Norte, the most prominent architects of Mexican migrant music, recorded a song they called Paisano a Paisano and imagined themselves in the middle of the Sonoran middle of the desert, surrounded by the freedom of expanses and distances, the desert's limitless horizons and vistas, while singing about their limits in a time of border war. I have spent my life exploring other lands to give a better future to my children, they sing, because we wanted to work. They have declared war on us. They are patrolling the borders, but they cannot tame us. together for dancing crowds here in Los Angeles every single weekend and all throughout Mexico. Sonideros on both sides of the border have been overt in their support of migrant rights and frequently use their performances and CD mixes to launch political commentaries on migrant injustice, employing sound system amplification as a form of migrant protest. <laughs> 